You're listening to Needless to Say, another disgraceful member of the Damaged Goods Podcast Network. Check out us and other great shows at damagedgoodsinc.com. Never forget. Never forget to change a profile pic to a picture of the Twin Towers. Never forget to dust off that American flag that you got stuffed in your closet that you haven't brought out in a year out of fear that someone might try and burn it or just yell at you because you obviously don't care about others' feelings. Never forget to tune into your favorite media outlet and watch the towers fall on fucking repeat for 24 hours. But don't worry, on September 12th you can put it back in the closet and forget for another year. You can change your profile pic back to the pic of the most recent dead celebrity or just your pic with the color or ribbon of the week on it. I didn't need you or the media to remind me what day it was. The calendar does it every fucking year. Like every other red-blooded American, I remember that day crystal clear. Some more than others. A lot of people lost loved ones that day. A lot of people were traumatized for the rest of their lives by actually being there and just escaping by the skin of their teeth. There were people that day in New York City that had a front row seat to the biggest tragedy this country has ever seen, including one of the guys at this table tonight. Do you think they forgot? Do you think anyone has? The answer is a big fucking no. Now, I'm not saying to sweep it under the rug and forget. I would never say that. But 17 years later, can we tone it down a bit and not tear open that wound for so many so that a few can feel good about themselves because they haven't forgotten? Or was it just that they wanted to be the first person to change their profile pic to reflect how much of a fake patriot they are? On September 11th, 2001, we saw true evil do its thing. On September 12th, 2001, we stood together with resolve and stood tall. We beat up non-Muslim taxi drivers because they slightly resembled a Muslim. We waved flags and we were proud to be Americans. Then it wore down after a few months and we were back to treating each other like assholes and worrying about ourselves again. Then on September 11th, 2002, we did it again. This time for a day, but by September 12th, we forgot again. Shit, even the government forgot and fucking bombed every Muslim country but the ones that actually were responsible for the attack. God, I love September 12th. But I'm going to end this now and start the show. Before I forget, Maestro, hit that music. Welcome back to Needless to Say. I am here with Ringo and Pete Best, the Forgotten Fifth Beatle. <laughs> what is going on, fellas? I feel like I was just with at least one of you. <laughs> yeah, How you, you feeling, are. Mike? Good. Yeah, you're intact tonight. Beat, beat and hurting, but feel good, though, that the week's over. Yeah, you finally. look great. You look great. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I feel great. You don't look a day over atrophy. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on folks how we doing it's friday night got the car get the fuck out of yeah. here <laughs> finally a. got the car i feel like there was a land speed record we were going for here like one more <laughs> week and there would have been like a national geographic crew out filming it, you <laughs> yeah it was fucking insane man it was just it was nuts but yeah they 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 came through last night. They called me up and they came, they came through. through <laughs> after no, all this. They rallied. Yeah. They, they rallied. You know, they were like, you know, they kept their sixth weeks, word, you know? <laughs> and uh, yeah, they kept their sixth word. Yeah, exactly. So I went there and, you know, there's just one, you know, one thing I'd like to say, though, about those guys at State Line Jeep is uh, they can all go fuck themselves. <laughs> Agreed. And I hope that building burns to the fucking ground. Fuck yeah. them. You Elliot. gotta wait two more weeks because the Johnsons from Somerset, Massachusetts bought a Jeep two weeks ago and they're waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Waiting. As soon as they get their car though, all bets are off. So <laughs> but we go in there and the guy the salesman comes out, gives us a car, he shows my wife, you know, because he does a typical walk through the car. You know, he has this but this does this, blah blah blah. So well he had to. It's yeah. been two weeks since you've seen the fucking yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Remember? Three. Remember what this button did? So <laughs> He does that, and then he's like all excited. He's like, "All right, um, let's take a picture." <laughs> Fred's like, "No, 
<laughs> yeah. I was like, no, not taking a picture. I was like, yeah, she was for what the police report. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, I mean, she was she was polite. We went there, we got the car. You know, she didn't say no, but she was like, no, nah, I I really don't want to do a picture. She was like, oh, I'd like. To. So I said, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I get up, and uh, Fran wasn't happy about this because she's like. I can't believe you did that. But I was like, ah, fuck it. Fuck these people. So I took the picture. He's handing me the key. So we're holding, both of us holding the key in one hand. And with my other hand, I'm flipping them off <laughs> <laughs> in the picture. So it's Good. awesome. So, so how many weeks is that going to be on the website before they notice that? I, I went looking for it today. It's not up there yet. We're going to so get were, it. We're going to get it up there. Yeah. Even if we post it ourselves. Yeah. yeah. I will Photoshop you yeah. <laughs> flipping off them and every other family yeah. that bought a, a three, four week old Jeep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was fucked up. We went, but one of the fucked up things, it kind of pissed me off was one of the guys said to me, one of the managers said to me, Oh, he's like, Oh, you're finally getting the car tonight. What's it been? Three months. Like, really? made like a wise crack. No shit. Oh, get out of yeah. here. Oh, they made light of this. So Yeah. So Either that, like, or maybe he was busting somebody else's chops. I, like, well, that's, that's probably what it was. I couldn't tell because I think that's what he was actually doing. Yeah. I think he was kind of saying it in front of the other, like, because of the other manager. Yeah. I think that's why he was saying it because I called and yelled at him one day, and he really didn't have anything to do with it. Because I was like calling and yelling at he someone does. new every day. He does. You know, I'm sorry but, yeah, for interrupting, no. but he's the manager of a Jeep dealership. Well, he's not in this, Somerset. This, this isn't New York City. This isn't the middle of like uh, the hottest no, fucking car. Ship there's in like the world. four managers in there. Everybody's it's, a manager. It's, it's like McDonald's. fucked up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, fuck them. State line Jeep, Somerset, Massachusetts, GNR Highway. Do not go there. Do not buy anything from them. Unless you like walking. Stay <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I want to encourage everybody to go to their social media page and blow that shit up. Blow, blow oh, them yeah. out of the fucking water. Because, you know, gonna, the car is safely in Craig's possession. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have it now and it will never go back for service for nothing. No, and no, I, I plan on getting on there. I I apologize that I dragged my heels. I had this whole job thing I had to do today. Yeah, it was fun. But Brad was like, all right, send me as soon as you leave the pocket, the parking lot. Send me a text. <laughs> yep. I text Brad. He's like, game on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to light them the yeah. fuck up. And also, I'm going to remind them, I was planning on buying a Jeep there. I said on the last episode, just 48 hours ago, I was planning on buying a Jeep there. Yeah. And I will not go anywhere near there. No. Nope. And oh, I'll definitely go near there. You know what I'll do? I'll go there and just waste somebody's time just for waste three hours. Just waste time for three hours. And just, yeah. you know, and then, nah, nah and just I'm leave. <laughs> just I just have them run your credit report. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I said three hours, not 15 minutes, kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, My credit's great. Yeah, um, <laughs> no, I know. I was just, but, the, you know, it's. As corny as it sounds, my wife's been under a lot of stress the past few weeks. You know, not just because of the car. The car was actually the one light she had to get, you know, because I said it, I mentioned it on the show before. Her dad's ill. You know what I mean? He's in the hospital. He's doing okay, but it's just very stressful for the family. And then she's having, she's in the most difficult time at work right now. It's the most difficult time of year for her. So she's going through that. She's just been so stressed. So everything, that car was like a little bright light. And it kept getting fucking poked out every time I called them to go pick it up. Mm -hmm. And that was, was when I talked to my wife the last time to tell her that we couldn't pick up the car that day, she almost was fucking crying. And yeah, I immediately fucking... called them back fucking screaming because I was I furious too. at that point. I was like, I got I like, Fran, let me call you back. I called them right back. I'm like, you motherfucker, better get that fucking car. You know, I was, and um, I feel really but, bad for accidentally keying it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, fuck to, to to pull out of that pocket the parking lot last night, and she started like flipping the butt, flipping on the buttons, and she had a big old smile on her face. I was I was very happy yeah. last night. You know, I think that's that's kind of like a microcosm for life because pulling out feels good for the woman, right? <laughs> 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 I like to leave it in. <laughs> then uh, I'm gonna let that shit marinate. <laughs> but anyway, fuck state line Jeep. Yes. Mike, how was your week, buddy? It was great. Small work. Finally got my iPhone. Take <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank the God. week they announce all the new yeah. iPhones. Mike yeah. launches into an iPhone 6. <laughs> <laughs> 
okay. It's like <laughs> shiny. Didn't pay yeah. for it. So he's all set. Didn't pay for the service. I, I, your former set, employer man. carries I'm cases set. for this. Yeah, they yeah, have I a know. ton of iPhone six cases of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> get ton yeah, of them. I, I got to go down there and get a case for it. Use your employee discount. You still got some of that, don't you? <laughs> I think I got the smock lying around it's somewhere. I'll just walk in there off. and grab it. But grab nine. Yeah, grab nine. Go yeah. hog wild. Yeah, why not? Fuck it. But um, yeah, it's it's been pretty busy and uh, <laughs> messing around with that freaking thing. That's something totally new for me. You know? What's the, oh, the phone? Yeah, phone. you lose it. You're like, holy <laughs> shit, it's got fuck it. It it's doesn't have things. buttons on it. It's got stuff on it. <laughs> this thing don't even flip. Mike pushed the center button <laughs> asking for the switchboard. Yeah. <laughs> like, why don't the numbers look like a fucking Texas instrument calculator? What? <laughs> Give me Banville 729, please. Segmented fucking numbers. He's waiting for Lily Tomlin to come out. One ringy dingy. Two ringy dingy. Uh, oh, shit. No, you got the, your new phone. Same time that new movie's coming out. Star Wars Episode 3. You fire Can't up. wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. It's going to be great. Oh, but shit. other than that, it's been it's been all right. It's been a weird week around here. I, you know, for all the stuff, all of our attention right now is down south, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. But we actually had kind of a weird tragedy up here in Massachusetts. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a tragedy. <sighs> Somebody died, and and by unusual circumstances. Yeah. Uh, but apparently, if you're a, a natural gas customer in and around the Boston area, don't be. Don't be get the fuck out of your house and so, go somewhere else. <laughs> I don't to this day, dude, like I've been following this for three days. I don't know what's going on there, but apparently there's been some kind of like backflow with the gas He's building and, pressure and the pressure. Yeah. And so they're depressurizing gas lines. But how many houses exploded this week? 80, 80 houses had fires and or explosions. It was eight at last night. It was up to 80 that get, were oh, either wow. on fire or blew up. And, and and people amazingly didn't die except for one poor sat who got crushed by his own chimney. Yeah, and which is a horrendous thing. I mean, we're not even a joke about that. You no. know, it's horrible. But this is going on in the world right now, and yet nobody is talking about it up here. And I'm actually getting a little concerned. Why are we not hearing about this? What did the gas company do? And do we need to be worried because well, National Grid had to turn off electric up there? Chances are National Grid's doing some kind of business with these people. Yeah. Are we, I got natural gas in my house. I'm Me actually a little concerned. Do I need to no, worry about it's gas? Not, it's it's National Grid, man. They're, they're, yeah. Well, it was not. It was. It was no. A, it was a different gas. Different company. gas company. But National Grid is in that area too. They gotta have. I bet you National Grid owns that company. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty terrible up there. But um, Brad, your house didn't blow up or catch fire this week, did well, it? Well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Yeah, so I got a solicitation call this week from Catholic Charities. And, of course, they called me at the end of a work day. Of course. You know, it wasn't at lunch. It wasn't when I was in a decent mood. I caught a call at 5.45 p.m. alone in the house with two children who were antsy, waiting for their mother to get home. Yep. And I had to field the call from Catholic Charities. Now, <laughs> we get a lot of spam calls in our house. My daughter yeah, is too. convinced that we have family members in Mobile, Alabama. <laughs> We yep. don't, we don't, nor would I want them, <laughs> but we get a call from there. And every time you pick up, it's the IRS threatening me. And we've already covered that on this show, but I got one from Catholic charities and I picked up because I was in a mood because I've kind of had an odd relationship with God these last few months. Well, yeah. Or decades. So I answered the phone and as luck would have it, this was not a robocaller. It was a human being who went to work, started her shift at roughly 15 minutes before I got this phone call. <laughs> you could hear it in her voice. Yeah. She doesn't want this job. <laughs> she got a script when she walked in and they said, hey, today you're calling on behalf of Catholic Charities. Yep. And you're going to try to get donation money from somebody who may or may not be Catholic. Or fucked by a priest. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> That's it. Nah, she was Oops, female. Wrong person. <laughs> so a decent, normal human being would have just said, no, I'm sorry, I'm not interested, or no, I'm not Catholic, or no, really, please take me off your list. I laughed. Had to be a good 45 seconds straight at this woman <laughs> on the phone. And if you don't think 45 seconds is a long time, 
be on the other end of the phone when I'm yeah. laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been like, yeah, as soon as you get my hush money check in, I'll send you 25 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't even offer a reason. I just yeah. went. <laughs> 45 seconds. Because <laughs> <It's laughs> my daughter used the term 10 minutes. And if you do fifth grade to actual math, yeah. that's pretty accurate. I laughed at this poor woman, and the best part about it was when I was done laughing. When I finally said, I'm going to stop laughing into what I thought was an empty phone, she was still there. (laughs) (laughs) So I I, I said, no, I will not be giving you money today. And, And at that point, she should have hung up. But I said, no, I'm going to explain my reasoning. And I started off with an actual story I read this week. Billy Graham, who is not a Catholic. No. A Protestant of the First Order. Yeah. But Billy Graham's daughter came out this week and said 9-11 was God's punishment for trans people, evolution, and secularism. <laughs> what the- I didn't even <laughs> click the link. That's the headline tells man. the story. Yeah. That man is so dead. And his daughter now decides yep. she's going to pick up the throne there. And I said, yeah, it's not a Catholic problem, but it is kind of an overarching Christian problem. So you're going to hear about yeah. it, <laughs> followed by another 30 seconds of laughter. Yeah. <laughs> I then went to this woman and said, I didn't realize sit, stand, and kneel was an instruction manual for hairless ass rape. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't know what kind of life she lives. I don't know how many newspapers she gets to read in her third shift job, yeah. making oh. phone calls, but I'm pretty sure she heard about Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, as the Catholic Church would say, it's a bit of a blight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the shiny armor of the Catholic Church. <laughs> now, I told you guys weeks ago, I don't want to talk about priests anymore because every priest story we tell on this show always ends up the same way. It's always two priests in the back of a car. Yeah. They're, they're fucking in the public. Car. Or they're blowing a child. Yeah. Okay, and, they're do- and they're doing it like on the Santa Monica Pier where there's like a bunch of flashing lights and a big Ferris wheel and a whole ton of foot traffic. Yeah. These, uh, these yeah. Catholics decide that is the utmost place to fuck. To fuck. Yeah. <laughs> or, or for the people who hate our swing to consummate the relationship. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I don't want to talk about priests anymore unless it's about them swallowing just like gallons of liquid cancer. <laughs> I want them to shit in low tide and just shit themselves to a low crampy death. Okay, <laughs> this, this is what I want. I am embarrassed to have ever been a part of the church, Catholic or otherwise. Okay, and I was confirmed at 13 and the confirmation just said, hey, guess what? You're out. Yep. You can go. Go you make your own choices. Do, yeah, do and my thing. choice was to never go the fuck back in there. Never yeah. come back. Okay, the priest I had as a kid was a criminal. He was like a street thug who grew up and found Jesus somewhere in the, like, the bowels of Brooklyn. They were like, sure, here you go, dude. <laughs> somewhere at the boys' club. Have a job. Have a yeah. job. Have a job. He found you know, Jesus at the boys' club. They used to have like those... <laughs> exactly. 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 And Jesus, the, Jesus the loved every minute. on his lips. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> right on the workout equipment. Yeah. <laughs> and then this woman was like, well, I'm sensing some hostility. Yeah. <laughs> you think? You think? No, yeah. I got to hand it to her. We're four and a half minutes into this phone call. She's still there. Yeah. <laughs> She's I've, already, I've already laughed at her for 45 seconds and used the term hairless ass rape, <laughs> which incidentally is also now part of my daughter's vocabulary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's in the room and staring at me like, like daddy's lost it. This is over. I live with Craig now. (laughs) Did she give you that? So can I put you down for $5? (laughs) She didn't try to upsell me or downsell me. But I I said, you know, an all-knowing, all-loving God wouldn't let two-year-old babies starve and die in a sea of flies just because they didn't accept Christ. And yet that's exactly what the Catholic Church tells you to do. Right? Yes. Okay. They're basically saying, Hitler, if he had said, hey, you know what? I did some screwed up shit. I'm sorry about that. Jesus, I realize now you're the way. Am I allowed in? Basically, from what the Catholic Church has told me and what most Christians will tell you, as long as you do that like little act of penance at the end, it doesn't really matter what you did before that. You'll be accepted. Whereas a guy like me, who I live my life by my own Ten Commandments, which are pretty close to the ones that were on the 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 Marvel. A moral person's I'm a good person. I treat other people well. I treat them as I want to be treated. 
I don't steal, I don't rob, I don't kill. I think I should get in, right? But according to what I was taught as a Christian child, You're fucked. I'm done because I haven't accepted Christ into my life. And I said, at two years old, these people couldn't say Christ. How on earth are they supposed to accept yeah. him? Why are they dying a horrible, miserable death? And almost always a really devout Christian, not like Mike, who's a good Christian. Yeah, okay? on, and, and and we've had a lot of toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I'll be very candid here. But Mike's also a realist. Yes. Okay, and he's grounded in reality, and he realizes there are some discrepancies, if you will. A couple. Yeah. I think I think I think your thoughts reflect like most most normal Christians. Pages. I, I definitely. I, I hope you're right. I, I know I'm right. I because feel I feel like a lot of devout people come at me right now saying, "Well, you know what? If if you accept Christ into your heart, you don't even have to say the words or something like that." And that poor kid is dying. He just wants to know where yeah. his next bottle of water is coming from. Yeah. How about, how about yeah. the How about the fucking Brazilian tribes that nobody's ever a fucking scene that is just living out in the middle of the jungles. Yeah. They don't know who you are, much less a, a long haired you know, bearded they, guy. They see a helicopter, they start shooting arrows at it. They're like, what the fuck is this sorcery? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, what is that? I yeah. think <laughs> <laughs> the down He's walking on water, blow yeah, dart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. yeah. Could you imagine that he comes with a loaf of bread and two fish and they go yeah, the whole yeah. point. <laughs> Next thing you know, his head's all shrunk, just hanging yeah, the whole fucking side. <laughs> like, wow, wow, <laughs> wow! He looks, he looks fucking, like the, the uh, like a photo of Deep Purple from yeah. 1974. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, I just, I just think where everything goes wrong is when humans come into the picture. Well, that's good. That's I, it. I, I think yeah, the, the church would be better bullshit. without humans. I am all true. for it. all, all humans. Yeah. But, but, you know, if the phone call had ended there, it would have made a lot of sense. But I don't make a lot of sense. So neither did she for not fucking hanging up. Yeah. Fucking so. I think at this point I had her attention and she figured my night's not going to get any better than this. I'm just going to have a bunch of hang ups. She's probably got like, yeah. she probably She's had like, like five other guys. Entertaining phone call right I now. I absolutely yeah. never called her out. I apologized twice. I said, this is not your fault. I said, I'm just, you've venting. reached, That's you, good. You, I'm See? venting and you've reached me at a point. At no point does this reflect on you. But then I immediately jumped into this sentence. If you rape kids, sweep it under the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> if you rob millions from inbred sheep watching TV church, all good. If you spend too much time washing your own dick, sinner. Yep. And don't you dare eat meat on Friday during Lent because you'll rot in flames of it's, hell. It's so funny because God and or Jesus never said any of those things. No, no it's none, fucking no, people. No, none. It's people. Of it's, course it is. But I said, you know, if there isn't a God mess, wouldn't it be necessary for us to create one just to kind of explain away things dumb people don't understand? You know, because anything good in this world, it seems like everything is God is good. Yep. It's God's work. God is great. But anything bad that happens, like those kids with the covered in the flies yep. or an earthquake that swallows up a family just because they had the nerve of living there. OK, that's one of God's mysteries. Why do we explain things away? As a mystery, just because we can't admit the fact that maybe there isn't an all-knowing, all-loving God on top of it. I do believe in a higher power. I've yeah. explained this to you guys off the air. I really do think there's a reason we're here. I think there's a purpose. There's a reason we've been given conscious thought. I told her, I said, I'm a good person. I said, I'm a damn good one. I even swore at her. I said, I help my fellow man. I don't break any of these fake bullshit commandments because I live my life doing the right thing. If God keeps me out of the pearly gates, then those fake words were even more meaningless now. Yep. Like if I get there and he's like, well, you know what? You helped everybody you knew, but you didn't accept Christ. You're a failure. You got to go. Well, I kind of don't want to hang out there anyway. The world is billions of years old. Adam and Eve were made from a steaming genetic stew, not from spare ribs. <laughs> and by the way they also didn't exist it's called the parable fuckers oh my god yep. fish sandwiches and spare ribs speaking of fish <laughs> I already mentioned it but two fish and a loaf of bread fed one family not one million the Red Sea receded didn't split in half it was fucking low tide people enough Moses found a way to get them across with minimal right. death because God showed him the way and by the way dinosaur <laughs> 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 You might so, want to take here. Let me speak on your level now. <laughs> Dinosaurs and people only knew each other in Land of the Lost. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and by the way, if Slee Stacks were in the Bible, it would be just as believable. <laughs> <laughs> Since the Bible is the world's longest running game of telephone. 
and it's yeah. cop from 16 other religions to boot. Game, set, match, motherfuckers. Yep. Okay, besides, if I'm going to hell, not only will I see both of you, <laughs> we'll be doing a podcast. We'll have down a there. podcast that nobody will listen to down there either. Yeah. Yeah. But the music's supposed to be way better. Yeah. <laughs> Except Skin one thing metal. scares me. One thing scares me. And that's the concept of personal hell. Because that's what I think hell really is. It's not like fire and like people dying and screaming. No. I think you're trapped in your own worst fears. And my fear would be trapped in a room with a loop tape of Craig's Southern Rock yeah. <laughs> and Mike skipping after 12 to 15 seconds of Metal Church. Yeah. <laughs> so that, bored, my friends, after, at that point, I, I bid her a good evening. I said, no, I will not be donating. And that, my friends, was my week in review. <laughs> She's calling you but next week. wait, hold week. up. She's calling you next week. You know Football's that. back, by the way. That was uh, enlightening. I'd like to think so. Enlightening? Yeah. Sure. I hope not. Yeah. That, that's, well, how gonna, that's how I'm going to spend my weekend. Yeah. Enlightening. <laughs> enlightening. <laughs> no, but uh, speaking of, act of acts of God, <laughs> yep. there's uh, a hurricane that bared down on the Carolinas today. It even bore down. Yeah, bore down. That, yeah, that's, that's right. That's Bourdain. <laughs> Bourdain, Bourdain. Bourdain. It is hanging. It's hanging in southeast right, United it's States. It's hanging right, right over the state. <laughs> <laughs> Just dangling over there, swinging around. Well, from what I can gather, there's a lot of seafood in everybody's living room yeah. now. It, it out. No, it's terrible. Like uh, a plumb line. A lot of, lot of shit going on. But it was. It came in. They were like category. This thing's going from category four to category five. You know, they're like, it might strengthen as it hits the shore. Hopefully it doesn't. And I'm sitting there last night watching it. I'm like, God, I hope this doesn't go to a Category 5. This is bad. It, and hit, then ca- woke- it hit Cat 5. Yeah, no, it did. It did it. Yeah, it did. Oh, no, it for, hit Cat 5. Bit. But then it died right back down. Oh, it, 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 And then it got to the U.S. and just stopped being productive, just like most people do. Yeah, and it, it. Went from, <laughs> it went. It went from this... <laughs> <laughs> it's just like oh it's America I can be lazy now yeah. hey Thing, things only started, travel at three miles an hour right now towards Africa it's like hey yeah. somebody help me out <laughs> like, I, I need, need a little juice over here need well, some that's, high just, that, that's just it's just leaking everywhere yeah I mean that's all it's doing but it's leaking badly it's leaking badly and I mean granted it hit it, I mean Category one hurricane, you know, 90 mile an hour winds are not a day in the park. Well, that's going to knock thing. down trees. It's going to fucking tear What determines shit the category? I'm sorry for cutting you off, but what, wind what speed. determines it? It's just wind speed. Just right? wind yes. speed. So it has nothing to do with the size of the storm or the surge or no. the rainfall. It's, because nothing. the storm surge is still 85 feet. Yeah. Okay. They're looking at 40 inches of water yes. for you as a category so, one storm. This thing ain't no it's joke. Devastating. No, it's devastating. I almost devast- feel like that's- this category system is actually a detriment right yeah. now. Yeah. What I was getting, but well, that's it's not really a detriment because they're telling you at that point it's category four storm. The sustained winds are like 135 miles an hour. Those are just the regular winds. The gusts are like 180. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? That's blowing your house right off the foundation. Just water is the, you know is what I mean? the main thing. But this storm, even though it, when I woke up this morning and I was like, category one. Like, that's what we get up here. You know what I mean? All right, but, but what so, has that done to us? You know, I mean, it's yeah, it's done some damage, but still, it's going to do damage. But I was, like, glad to see that it had downgraded is what I was getting at. Of course, because you, know? you don't want to see and, people in those coastal areas yeah. really, really suffer. But at the same time, they already are. Yeah. But yeah. Then wa- you, water is the most devastating thing in definitely. the world. Yeah, but then you see, that's what the thing with this, is then you see the potential. It's like, wait a minute. Does it matter if the wind's blowing or not? This thing's dumping feet. Oh, yeah. Fuck, literal feet of rain. I mean, think think about these winds going on. This thing is moving at three miles an yeah. hour. And it's just... Is that how slow it's going on? Yeah. yeah. It was at 17 yeah, right. when it was a Cat 5. As soon as it's it hit land, arguably it's arguably more right dangerous down. now because it's just it's down, there. downgraded. It's just and it's water. just hanging out, dumping water in an area that doesn't need it that doesn't need well, it. what i, I mean, can gather i have friends in carolina and they're saying their ground was already saturated from rain this week yeah so right. there's nowhere to put well, it. i mean this week 
Carolina's have been suffering storm. I mean, we know just from Christy, you know, looking at her posts, the amount of thunderstorms that we're getting, just yeah. torrential downpours. So it's not they they weren't in a drought. And <laughs> you now, know what I mean? Christy just messaged me. She did post a picture today. And I yeah. wanna I wanna call her out <laughs> yeah, on this. Yeah. <laughs> Christy, you're better than this. When you know people are suffering from a storm and yeah. you, you post a picture of your sunny yard with your dogs rolling around <laughs> she's with no wind. You're like you're like that bitch that throws out the, the picture of the lawn chair knocked over and saying we will rebuild. Yeah. Okay. You're no better than that. I'm. I thought you were better, but I do want to give Christy a shout. I promised her I would literally ten seconds ago to her new dog Abby. Yes. Yeah. It's so cute, man. Abby's Beautiful great. Dog. Abby's great. I'm glad she's not enduring a hurricane. Yeah. Even though a I lot think, of other people's dogs I maybe, are. I think maybe she was trying to say that she's around well, that area she, and she hasn't well, they no. felt the effects what, yet what oh she no was she was to... totally boasting okay <laughs> yeah she, well, she you know was... what <laughs> i gotta say one thing for thank brad's almighty god that it wasn't us i gotta say that <laughs> yep. man. i gotta say that man no but i mean th this thing's dumping rains at, at such a phenomenal rate that yeah it's incredible the ground is just mush now and we, like i said we know from christy it's been raining it's going to flood a lot faster with having this ground already saturated the path of the storm is and unbelievable then the, the other thing is so how weak are these root systems of these trees so does the wind need to be 150 miles an hour to knock over a tree Probably no not when, when no, the it doesn't. water when the ground is that saturated you know, it, you're it's right. just a stick in mud a little bit of wind's going to blow it over so it is dangerous, but the fact that it downgraded and the weather channel, which I love watching the fucking weather oh, channel because they try to, show. they get five in the morning. They, they get right. Yeah. I, <laughs> and that, I was, there's that one guy, that one they guy, get, that one ball guy. He's like, he's like a weightlifter. Like, yeah. And this storm's oh, going to He was wearing ass. a baseball helmet this morning. No, sir. Oh yes, he was. That's yes, the same guy that he cried, was. that cried live on the air about seeing, about seeing, Snow lightning. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Remember that? He yes. was actually, oh, my God, I heard about it, but I've never seen it he'd live before. Seen it. And it was he'd like, never oh. seen it in his life. Does so he wear a like, helmet when he gets on the bus to and from <laughs> yeah, work? Too? I think right, that yeah. might be. I think he just forgot to take it off in the interview. <laughs> is what it was. I mean, you know, he actually wore a helmet. During yes, he was wearing a baseball helmet. So well, he's he, mocking everybody that's in the way of the storm. Well, yeah. you don't want to get and, hit by a, by a stray, what? Two by four, or yeah. Whatever, you know? But he was doing He's like the, the Joel Austin. You know, he was the, the guy who was channel. <laughs> exactly. You got it, bro. He was pulling his jacket up and you leaning into the wind, like leaning into the wind, and the wind's driving in his face, and he's talking, and then these two people just stroll behind him on the sidewalk. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Do they have a fan on the sidewalk? Yeah. <laughs> no. What, but what it was, and I noticed they were doing this, and I noticed when they went to the other reporter, too, they they were looking for trees on the ground. Yeah. You go, go, and then they would stand behind him and report from him. They reported, you man. know. That's what they do. And then the one woman walks up, and she goes, look at this street sign. It was bent over because the tree fell on it. She's like, this, this is solid steel. She's pointing at the beam. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Hey. It's fucking a <laughs> fucking eighth of an inch thick steel. And, and that tree probably weighs three tons, yeah. you know? What I mean? Of course, course it's, it's bent it over. Bend it. You know? I bent one with my GT BMX I mean, once. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I'm not saying that. I, and I'm not saying it's not dangerous. It's dangerous. It is. But the people were the, having a casual stroll. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's <laughs> trying to fight wind that doesn't oh, he, exist. He was leaning with his jacket pulled up and talking to the microphone like, oh, yeah. And he's like yelling into the microphone. And these two people just with raincoats on behind him, like walk by. <laughs> he's got one of them floppy jazzer sized yeah. windbreakers on. <laughs> Yeah, fuck it that guy. Yeah, insane. what's up with that? Every single new uh, weather well, weather person has that same exact getup. They all have that that windbreaker thing with. Well, the, that's with their the, uniform. The yeah, weather what, channel. What? what, what, what uh, this I don't know. There's a company that freaking puts them all out, and every every one of them wears it. Whatever, well, that doesn't matter. It would be Columbia thing, Sportswear. Thank yeah. you. That's yes. it. Thank you. The thing is, I get it. It's the Weather Channel, so any major weather event is going to be their Super Bowl. Of course. You know, so they're going to rush out. And then when it starts to not be as, they as, oh, as devastating as they think it's going to be, they still have to play it up. Yeah, they got to dramatize you know? it, of course. And granted, 
they they were saying it. It was when it hit Shaw, it may die down. They weren't lying, but they're still hamming it up. Of course, you know, they have to. Yeah. Well, yeah, of they, course. I mean, could you imagine being like an executive at the Weather Channel? And you're like, yeah, ratings are down because people are living. And it's sunny. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> sunny and, and, and the weather's behaving and it's only rained like 18 days in San right. Diego this year. Okay. Wait, wait a minute though. Hold on. Hawaii is about to just ruin people's lives. Okay. Let's get out there. Yeah. And this is like, this is where they get their ratings. Yeah, it is. You know, it's kind of uh, morbid, predatory. Yeah. Predatory. Yeah, it is predatory. Yeah. Morbid. It's predatory. I mean, reporting. granted. I fucking watched it, but it wasn't the fact that I was watching it to see people get killed. I was trying to see what's going on. I but if, know but if going people on. got killed, you would have watched, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you're, you're a horrible like, human being. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, it's like a, like a war reporter no. will do the same thing. If you can it's get like a shot in a front NASCAR of a bunch race. of dead people, you know, if you can get a shot in front of a bunch of dead people during a, a wartime story, he's going to do it. Agree, you know. Agree. It's, it's like it NASCAR. Goes like that with everything. Yeah, nobody You're not watches watching NASCAR it for the fucking for the... race. You're no. watching to see someone crash in a fucking wall. Right. I watch you NASCAR know? for the athleticism. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's incredible. On a car sponsored by drive, Budweiser. Cup holders in them. <laughs> yeah, they got a cup holder in their car. <laughs> yeah. The only athleticism is the guys playing cornhole, cornhole in the middle of the freaking track. I'm a, yeah. I'm a big fan nah. of the car that's sponsored by Jack Link's beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> he is the epitome of an athlete. That's, to me. that's how I, that's how I root for teams. <laughs> I sit in my living room, the yeah. race starts. I just look around. I'm like, oh yeah. shit, oh that Doritos. car looks cool. All right, I'm going. Yeah. Ah, number twelve, go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, it's tragic, and I get it, and it's sad. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to see. Because what I'm thinking about it more than anything, I know it's not as dangerous now because people have evacuated, and I'm sure you know there there were a few deaths, and that's terrible. But the, I think more on the devastation of like the wildfires that happened in California. You're walking away from your home, and your shit's just gone. Yeah, you know, you don't and know if you're gonna nothing, see it again. You're gonna or... come back to a fu- to fucking ruins. Yeah, but here's the here's and the that's bad happened part to me, and, and, so I get yeah. it. Yeah, and I'm sorry that's I right. cut you off on that. Please finish. I'm sorry. No, I, no, that's happened to me. I was at work driving home from work, and I'm at a red light, and I just see smoke pouring from near my neighborhood, and I'm like, okay. And as I get to the next red light. I could see the roof of my house and I see firemen on it. <laughs> Just fucking chopping yeah. a hole in it. It was an apartment building, you know, yeah. but I got to run to the apartment and now my apartment's burning down and I lost Sucks. everything. You know, I, I mean, I salvaged some stuff, but I lost a ton of shit. So mm. I know that feeling. I'm not going to get into the story. I'm just saying, I know that feeling and it's fucking horrendous. Everything that you worked for, yeah. you know, to, to, you know, be happy in your house, whether it's your nice television or your, Anything, your, or your nice couch. It's your, it's your it, life. It's your stuff. It's your life. Now it's gone. Mm-hmm. Now you got nothing, you know, and you're wearing your father-in-law's pants. <laughs> 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 yeah. It fucking blows. <laughs> and he's considerably taller than yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So that just sucks. <laughs> So I get it. But, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm going to start bringing the mic into the bathroom. With yeah. I really am. Because that, that warranted a bigger laugh than it got. Yeah. I want to walk. You. He was like a 48 waist. Yeah. <laughs> you were in suspenders and you look like you're yeah. doing like, a, yeah. like some kind of fifth grade talent show yeah. somewhere. It looks like part of the little rascals. Yeah. No, it fucking blows. So I get it. And I hate, that's what I hate seeing is the aftermath of this. Because you know that a Everybody thousand, a thousand people that. Nobody evacuated wants to see that. and a thousand people are going to go back to their homes that are fucking filled up to their fucking first floor windows with water. You know, this begs a bigger question. If you live on the coast, and granted, the Carolinas haven't seen a hurricane like this in 20, no. th- almost 30 years. Yeah. And they're calling the rain amount, they're, they're calling the it a thousand year storm. Yep. We had that hundred year storm a couple of years ago. Where we got a lot of rain and my shit flooded all over the state. Yeah. But they're calling this a thousand year event. All right. But it seems like every year now we get the storm of the century. Well, it's been and, a thousand years. Well. Since the then, last one. Then, <laughs> so. Superstorm Sandy when it hit New York. Yeah. Devastating. Okay. Horrible what happened. Okay. There, there was loss of life. 
there was, uh, they're still repairing. Yeah. Like all those communities in Queens oh, yeah. and Brooklyn, they're still repairing. And it's bad. I mean, I, you know, but we live on the East Coast of the United States. There are hurricanes that come this way. Yes. The one thing we shouldn't be as a people is surprised when you get hit by one. If you're in Florida and you hate thunderstorms, why do you fucking live there? Right. Yeah, because it's daily. Yeah, <laughs> it's every day. It's five minutes. And then when a hurricane comes in and devastates you. Now the Gulf, which are not used to these things, are now getting them. Okay, what, what I want to know, what's going on in the world? Because there's other four other storms in the Atlantic right now. Four, four named others. storms. Yeah. We had five. Yeah, there was five And one, one landed. So we got four time. others just floating out there. And one of them's heading to us. <coughs> yeah. In a week or so, we could be talking about us. Hey, it's on our way. I yeah. mean, yeah. I'm not a meteorologist or anything, but I no? watch one on TV once in a while. I stayed, you <laughs> stayed at a Holiday Inn last night. <laughs> but but high, stood in pressure, front of a holiday. Yeah. high pressure. High <laughs> pressure. From what I understand, it, it, what, I mean, it happens your, every once in a while. Your couch understands it, too. No, so does my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever there's high pressure going on. <laughs> Brett, but if, high pressure. I, you know that I've been saying this to a few people. If I can get Brad to shoot booze out of his nose, he did it. I will do it. He did it a couple of weeks ago. I will have fucking. I could die happy. He did it. A Let couple me tell of you right ago. now. If and I could shoot, look- if I could shoot booze out of this nose, there'd be a storm surge here in Rhode Island. Fucking Cat Five. <laughs> cat fucking Six. They'd have to yeah, invent the Cat Six. They'd have to invent uh, some there kind was. of cat. But. There, there, there but I was just looking at Brad, and I could see a lot of dead cats. Was put it that way. That I was holding that back. I took a huge pull. That of was you had to concentrate. And yeah. I was about to launch this alcoholic nonsense through <laughs> my nose. You definitely had to concentrate. I'm not fucking it's my doing goal. That. Uh, you know but, what? This is a birthday gift for our friend Bob, yeah. who has made yes. fun of my nose yes. for at least seven years. Yeah. <laughs> but happy you know, birthday, Bob! Talk, you know happy all birthday. these people. All, I mean, it's a devastating thing. They're obviously, fucking, you know, going through these storms. But what about poor Trump? Poor, poor fucking Trump, man. <laughs> first, first he's dealing it's like I'm with. I'm supposed to go off in Myrtle yeah, Beach next week. First, yeah. first he, <laughs> First, he's dealing with Stormy Daniels, now fucking Stormy Florence, and fucking all this <laughs> fucking shit. What the fuck, man? I just wish he paid this one off to go away. <laughs> I think we're the only show on any network that used the term poor Trump. <laughs> <laughs> unless exactly. They were, unless they're talking about his like, IQ. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Agree. Yeah, agree. Then, then that's all over. Yeah, place, yeah. Do you know what Whatever. I love most about Mike? He's coming around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but speaking of tragedy, this week we were in remembrance of one of the biggest tragedies in this country's history. And terrible, obviously. You can't describe the, the horrificness of it. But <laughs> I can't describe the horrificness, the horrificness. of your grammar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay to laugh, boys. It's been 17 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think but that's kind of the point of where we're the, getting What at. I'm getting at is it's been a long time now. So <laughs> why do we continue to, as Brad said earlier, pick that scab? Can yeah. we can we can we move on? Never forget. No who's gonna forget it? <laughs> no one. Nobody forgot Vietnam. No. And and nobody yeah, forgot we, Pearl Harbor. And we still we still acknowledge these days. Yes. But, you know, this is the first time in a while that we'd really been attacked on our own turf and caught off guard, caught yes. on our heels. And that's why we're so prickly about it. You know, and I, I was in New York City that day. I'm not going to be one of those latcher on people. But I was right there. No. Uh, I was minutes away. No, no, but no you I wasn't. I was up. I was uptown, but it. I witnessed shit in real time. Yes. You we did. went up to the roof of our office building and watched shit fall. And we watched people jump. And we saw things that we never want to see again. Yeah. Horrific day. But it's been 17 years. And (sighs) I don't want to diminish the importance of the day, the impact of the day. I don't want to forget just how great it was on the 12th. On the 12th. And how great it was to watch people in New York. Now, I mean, let's be real. We all talk about New York on here and I joke about it and all that. New Yorkers have a reputation of being kind of a prickly people. 
They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to be. Everybody's heads down, walking straight forward. Yeah. It was one of the stepping f- over fucking people having heart exactly, attacks. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, like Homeless that. people, Homeless they're people in annoyance. You, you move on. around it. You go about your day. Yeah. So the most self-involved city in the world, probably. And I'm okay with that. But it was great to see everybody kind of come together. And I'm sure I'm not alone on this network. I know they're all kind of from around there. They all have yeah. their own memories. I will say this though. After 17 years, it's gotten to the point now where I actually forgot 9-11 was coming. Melissa's birthday happens to be September 10th. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to forget 9-11. But (laughs) I was thinking about her birthday. And I was thinking about being in September and my kids being in school. I wasn't necessarily thinking about 9-11. And as somebody who witnessed it, at least from afar... That was a good thing. Yeah, it's yeah. healing, man. I, I actually felt like, you know what? Maybe it's not going to dominate my thoughts. And I'm not thinking about those little dots, which yeah. happen to be people jumping was, out of a building. That was the worst part of the say, whole situation. So they had a little bit of control over their final moments. Yeah. They they wanted to be found. They didn't want to be a pile of ash. Yeah. And and my, my heart is with them. But I, I don't know if we're doing ourselves a favor by continuing to give it the constant attention that it needs. Give it the reverence it deserves. Yes. I mean, I've been to the memorial. I signed my name on the wall in the fire department right across the street. You know, me and my wife both signed our names on there. It's a giant wall with, you know, people right on it. And, and that's awesome. And I did that recently, only a few years ago. Um, So it's not that I'm saying to, oh, you know, forget about it. It's over. I'm not saying that because you, the, how could you possibly forget no, about it? Yeah, we'll never Everybody forget. Everybody witnessed the horrible. We, we always say never thing. forget. And I'm no. not cutting you off again. I'm being the dick tonight. No, but but we say Just never tonight. forget. Never forget is kind of the motto <laughs> for 9 11, isn't ne- it? Never forget uh, yes. for anything big now, ever since 9 11. It's been never forget, never forget, never. How could you? How could you? Everybody knows where they were. Yeah, it's like our, it was our JFK. And what I think happened is media, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, all these are like, you know, hey, guys, guess what? Yeah, it's another fucking to... September 11th coming up. Let's run a special. Let's get some ratings. Media controls so, so much of our fucking it, lives it, it these days. And no it. one fucking and it has it. It's 60 years. I yeah. Mean, yeah. This is not but, new. But more, but, more but of now But there's than no ever. respect in the fact that they're like, let's run. So the other night on September 11th, I could sat in my bedroom and flip through every channel and watch those fucking towers fall again. Why is it okay to watch that? You know, we don't, don't watch other murders on yeah. TV. There have been murders that have been televised that we don't watch again. Nobody no. watches JFK getting his head fucking blown off. No, because that was terrible. It was a singular thing. This was like an attack on All everyone. Right, but but, but 3,000 people died in that building. That plane right. that That's a murder the building scene. had 100 yeah, some people on it. Well, I gotta tell you, I just think we're glorifying things the more attention we give it what do you tell a bully in school or you tell somebody who's a victim of a bully you tell them don't give them the attention and it'll stop yeah the more we televise these things on an, on an international scale and they see how much we're still devastated by this we're just kind of positioning ourselves as prone for another attack right? yeah now i have to tell you i lived in new york then obviously i, I was there you yeah. know I, I saw it all the biggest moment for me wasn't that day. It wasn't even the next day. It came weeks later. I went to a Mets game. I happened to buy a ticket. And, you know, it's all over the news. Everybody, Mike yeah. Piazza's home run yes. is iconic. Yeah. Yes. Okay, we yeah. get it. I happened to be there. I bought myself a single seat. That's awesome. And I went to that game. And But what I got out of that game wasn't that the Mets won. It wasn't even the whole grand sweeping, the city is healed. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like that. No, we haven't. Because I sat there between innings. It's right next to LaGuardia Airport. Every time a plane took off, everybody in that stadium looked up. Looked up. 50,000 people looked skyward and waited for something bad to happen. It was a weird time to be in the city. It was like living in Beirut. Yeah. Because there were jets flying overhead yeah. constantly. And everything Military became a jets. No- Military jets flying overhead constantly. Helicopters everywhere. The smoke still working its way up from downtown. It would made its way up the river. It would flow out to the the harbor and then blow up for the days river. man like like i said when i when we left uh to go on our honeymoon we could see 
Uh, smoke we, we everywhere. Saw, smoke. Uh, we saw it. And well, there was no, a smell. Even, there was a yeah, smell. Oh, yeah. It was burning metal and it was burning like people. Worse than, was usual, burning people. worse than usual New York smells. The other, the other, <laughs> yeah. The other um, thing that was weird was the, everything was shut down. Airlines were shut down. There yeah. was no flights coming in or leaving. Right. And I remember going to work and we're outside. We're unloading the truck and stuff. And we live near an airport. Granted, we don't live near it. No, it's across but, the bay, yeah. but it's right there. Yeah. It, you know, as the crow flies, it's only like four miles away. You know. Yeah, and actually, we're so, right in the flight right path. Right in the flight, yeah. flight path. So Please fly over the my house silence, every day. The time. silence was actually eerie. Yeah. Like I didn't realize how many planes <laughs> flew over until they were not flying over. Right. right. To be here and be affected by it, almost in a sense, to say, "Wow, this is." Weird. What is going on? I had to walk uptown. I was one of the, uh, I was one of the, uh, the migrants in New York. And, yeah. and the worst thing I saw that day was a bunch of Muslim, I, I guess I'll call them expats, celebrating in the streets. Yep. And they had police guarding them. Yeah. To protect them from being murdered by a bunch of angry New Yorkers. And God they were being protected. Yeah. They were being protected by the rights that they tried to take down. Exactly. Yeah. The, yeah. And, and that is something that I'll never. I, more than anything that I saw that day, that was the one thing. I was walking up the 86th Street. My sister lived up there, and that was the closest apartment we could get to because all the subways were shut down and everything else. And so we we walked and we walked and we walked and we walked and I got there and we watched more TV just like everybody else in the world did. Yeah, but watching these people celebrating in the streets and screaming about us, the infidels, while yeah. they were running I a business that. in our city, in your city, in our Collected, country, taking your money, exactly. Yeah, and they were celebrating that. But doesn't it doesn't it make but but it makes it makes our country look so much stronger though? I agree. A, you know well, what I mean? Did. After seventeen, but then years, it also yeah. did things like this. Like I saw, which made uh, made. Some people look stupid, which pissed me off because I'll never forget. Remember that convenience store in downtown that was on Wood Street, the red one? It's still there, actually. Yeah, that yeah, it's little, still there. They, they used to sell rolling Across papers the street from, one, from a, a bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember it well. Yes, <laughs> I remember it fondly. Yeah, I do. And what I remember was going in there to buy a pack of cigarettes and, and papers. No, I no uh, at no. that time I was no, I was all done. I went in there to buy a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> And the guy is behind the counter, and he's Lebanese, wearing a cross. He's a Christian. Yep. From Lebanon. These two kids stop fucking screaming at him, calling him a terrorist. Call, and I'm like, uh, no, he's he's a Christian. Yeah. He's from Lebanon. Them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? He's them, not. We had a lot of cab then, drivers in yeah. New York were so, attacked from this. Um, so, yeah. Sikhs. Wearing the turbans. Yeah. Yeah. They're not Muslims. They're not no, Muslims. It's, no, it's they're sad. Sikhs. Yeah. And they're also not extremes. They're, I don't know of any extremist Sikhs. No. They're just peace-loving people. There were Sikhs being beat up left and right after 9-11 for months. Months. Well, when we walked out, I said, I, we walked out and they were like yelling at him. Blah, blah, blah. We walked out and I said, you know, that guy's uh, Christian, right? <laughs> and they were like, Fuck him, blah, 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 and it walked away. And the next night, that guy actually got beat up. Oh, Jesus. They yeah, pulled him sad, over the man. counter. Two two people, I knew one of them. I didn't, I don't know him. I knew who he was. They pulled him over the counter and beat the shit out of him in the middle of the store for no reason whatsoever. For none. Because because he had a Middle Eastern accent. No, the reason was what it in, was. Yeah. The reason you know was I mean? ignorance. Yeah. Was the it was reason. ignorance. The guy was a Christian. And he, he, and he he was he had been in this country for almost twenty something years. <laughs> he yeah. was he was devastated. Just he was more else of an was. American than the kids that beat him up. Well, yes, they were longer. It yes. just goes to show you how far and wide the the tragedy of nine eleven touched so many people does. in so That's many still, different I'm ways. Not and trying it still to, does. Yeah, and, and there are people that are still affected by it and still take it to heart, and I, they should. But I think the media. And I think people throw in the. I don't think everybody on Facebook and and Twitter needs to throw up a picture of the towers. No, right. I don't think it's helping you heal. I really no, don't. It and if it is, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah. I apologize if it really is. I'm not trying to make a, a sweeping generalization of people who are coping. 
But it's been 17 years, and I think the only way to really heal now is to kind of put it behind us. You know, like, yeah, they got us, and they got us good. And they got us good. Yeah. But we've recovered. Country's doing all right. There's another tower there in its place. It's a little bit taller. And it's 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 a little more it's of a, a middle beautiful f- building. Well, it's a huge building and it's a middle finger to the rest of the world. Yep. yep. All right, we're just gonna keep going. And I don't think there's really anything left of Al Qaeda. I think ISIS has been stripped down to bare bare nothing. Yeah. So I, I, I think in terms of stopping the terrorism thing, we're doing all right. Yeah, I mean, there's been a ton of shit happening yeah, in France. Still there will always be, there will yeah. always we, be you know, terrorism. We, we lost soldiers last week. Yeah, we'll of course. You know, of course. That's never going to no, change. It's not. But I think as a country, in order for, for us to really heal, we might need to stop throwing so much emphasis into symbolism. Yeah. yeah. And maybe we just start living our lives. Moving on. And moving on, you yeah. know, and, and again, I, I, I'm not trying to be insensitive. I do feel it. I was there. I, dude, uh, I, I agree with you 1000%. I agree with you. It's like, you know, it, 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 at first, maybe the first five, ten years, it was like, yeah. But then after a while, it does become like a like an old wound that just opens up yeah, every pick, year. Pick and it's like, stab. and you try to get over it again. And it's like every year it comes up. It's like, oh, Talking it's coming, to you, guys. you know? I didn't want to relive this. Yeah, no yeah. shit. But I'm also the one that put the out, put it in the outline tonight. And, you did. And I'm okay with that. But I, I don't want to relive these moments. Right. I saw some shit that nobody should ever see. Right, man. And we, you guys all saw it on TV. We all saw the same things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, I just got a live show. What's you the goddamn would, yeah, difference? You can live a million years, dude, but, and never forget watching people no. jump out of those yeah, buildings. No, no, no. Never no. forget. There's a million other things I've seen on TV that I wasn't even alive to see that will still stay with me. Yeah, exactly. I think ultimately you internalize things. Eventually you have to kind of put it aside. Right. The country died a little bit that day. But like anything that dies... But then it was reborn the next day. It gets stronger. And it was reborn and the country got a little bit nicer. Do you know what I wish? I'm glad you brought that up. Every year around 9-11, this country, which let's face it, has been really divided. Yeah. Yep. And really ugly to watch people try to get along. Everybody all of a sudden on 9-11, from 9-10 to 9-12, let's just throw that out there. Yeah. Everybody seems to be okay again with the flag. Yeah. Everybody seems to be okay again with bald eagles and symbolism and loving their country again. And I, I, I'm i okay with that. But why does it have to stop? Why does it stop? Yeah, okay? exactly. You're supposed to love this country. You're supposed to love your fellow man. And that's one of the things that we've always gotten off on is this country since its Golden inception. Rule. It's in the Bible. Well, that Bible. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that Bible in another but episode. Did, yeah, speaking of I got another phone call to yeah. take. Hang on. Symbolisms and and flags and everything. There was a thing this week. Did you guys see that uh, bald eagle land on top of that fire truck that had the uh, the flag? Yeah, I did. That was a beautiful it, moment. How does that beautiful moment. It was just like the wreckage. How does that happen in the middle of the it city? was like the World Trade Center wreckage that formed a cross. Right. Yeah. Okay. A, a mere coincidence. Right. But a happy one for us. It gives us something to hang Give around. Gives us something to say, hey. What do you yeah. think symbolism has been since day I got one? Goosebumps, yep. man. Okay. We we always hang our hats on symbolism. But symbolism can't drive everything we do. You know what? Like you said, right. Right, you apologized for the fact that uh you know, you're saying for the people that uh, lost people there, or still and healing, st- and yeah. still healing. Yeah. You, you know, and we do apologize for that. If, that, if that's what, it, if you need that to heal, then yeah, I get it. Different we people, you know. It's... But Norm McDonald had to apologize twice this week. <laughs> that may be the weirdest transition yeah. we've ever oh, made on this. There's show. no transition in this one. <laughs> wow, I fucking love that on. guy too, man. We I jumped love right him. in. Where was Norm McDonald on 9/11? <laughs> <laughs> he's probably being fired by Saturday Night Live again. Yeah. <laughs> so Noah McDonald made an apology for the hashtag Me Too movement. Well, not for the movement, but for what he said about for it. For what he said about it. Yeah. What he said was he was glad it was slowing down. Aren't we all glad about that? A little bit. I mean, a little bit. It wasn't like we were against the reason behind no. it. No. I think what he was saying was, I'm I'm glad that it seems like there's less instances it's dying out. There's less people 
fucking raping people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and there's less people. All the people that have done it have been caught. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> all the and, famous people. And anyway. on the flip side of it, there's less people trying to capitalize on it because all of that capitalization Absolutely. is really what diluted that, that was, hashtag to nothing but piss water. Yes, you know, and and we just still had something this week. If you look, the the CEO of uh, CBS Entertainment, Les Moonves, yep. got nailed for countless sexual um, indiscretions, we'll call them. Yeah. But his wife also happens to be Julie Chen, who is on two or three different CBS shows. Yeah. And she actually signed off. She does Big Brother. And she actually signed off defiantly on CBS's Big Brother and called herself for the first time ever Julie Chen Moonves. Yep. So I guess she thinks he's innocent. Well, he he might be. He might be. Because who knows? All he might have just said, All right, thanks, sweetheart. Yeah. And and people what well, you just call me sweetheart? Yeah. That's where it's... it went. That was the thing. Well, there's like 38 counts against him, so I'm going to bank on him touching somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was that high. So he's like, hey, sweetheart. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> You're less Chinese than my wife. Come here. Yeah, come here. <laughs> you know, just had my wife, but it's been 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no i don't need soy sauce yeah no, no, but uh <laughs> yeah so no mcdonald made that and then people got pissed so he made an apology and he said you know that he was upset that people were upset about what he said and he described i'm glad it's slowing down because people aren't being hurt and this and that he said I don't agree with all these people that were accused of this stuff. I think they're terrible people. And you would have to have Down syndrome to think that they're not terrible people. <laughs> and he did that on Howard Stern. Yeah. <laughs> and now Howard Stern back in the day, that would have made sense. Howard Stern now, he's kind of... He's settling off. He's 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 leveling off. Well, he doesn't leveling. want to get whacked by any of this no, bullshit he doesn't want to get, on, He doesn't know? want to get like, fired. Like nobody, like nobody does, you Can know? Can we also kind agree that Howard Stern's a star fucker now? Well, yeah. He has been for 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Okay, he's so excited about getting celebrities in. He's not going to be extreme Howard anymore. Go back no. and watch private parts. Watch what he used to do. Yeah, yeah. no shit. And that shit. was a watered-down version of what he actually right. did. Right. It was a watered-down version of what he did. And he was brutal. And that's what made him who he was. And that's why he got offered, what was it, 50 million to go to Sirius Satellite. Yeah, he got paid stupid money it was, to I go be himself. I think it might have been more than that. Yeah, and he and he never even swore. It was all about his surrounding cast, you know? And he had fun with it and whatever. But this is what bothered me about Norm MacDonald. Norm MacDonald actually blamed the Howard Stern radio environment. Yeah. For his comment, that is such bullshit, and that's that's a horseshit that's, tactic. That's, yeah, and that's normally I would be out, behind man. Norm Macdonald because I would say comedian made a joke. That's what he does. Blah blah blah. We've done it a thousand times on this yep. show. That's a and this is a guy who got fired for numerous saying, times for saying fuck <laughs> on Saturday Night Live after they warned them like three times. This is, <laughs> yeah. Guy, yeah. this is also a guy that plays a cartoon pigeon on a fucking Mike Tyson cartoon show. Yeah, yeah, All right. yeah. So, all right, yeah. So, yeah. his agent's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, is what we're right, getting at right. here. I, I think Norm Macdonald's all right, and he stands by his guns. Him apologizing and is great. Him blaming Howard Stern's frat boy environment is fucking stupid. It's terrible, man. Yeah, th that's a yeah. goddamn ridiculous thing. Because why would you blame Howard Stern? Howard Stern hasn't gone for the cheap shock thing in a long time. Yeah. Why would you sit there and say, oh, yeah, well, it's an environment in there. Robin Quivers is still in there. Yeah. And so are a million other people that want to make sure you don't say anything stupid. Yeah. He had absolutely no business doing that. And the last part is, and I'm going to say this as somebody who used to think he was a comedian, <laughs> that was a terrible joke. Not because it made fun of people with Down syndrome, but because it didn't make it sense. It didn't make sense. It, yes. There was I mean, absolutely was... no connection with Down syndrome. And that and that joke. I thought. Yeah. I mean, I love. I loved. I love his drive. To say I, Down syndrome. Yeah. In the middle of his apology. I, I love his shock humor. Value. Yeah. I, I loved. I loved his old shit. You know his humor and everything. I love him as a comedian. But 
I mean, what, one thing I agree with you with is the way he fucking like j- just blamed the the scenario for his actions. That's ridiculous. Be a man, fucking. You know Suck what I mean? Suck it up. But I fucked up. I but made a terrible thing, joke. Yeah. Right. You made a terrible joke. Fucking say it. Whatever. Say, I'd rather. But in a, another, and on and, and the other hand, I don't think he, if, you know what I mean? You're a comedian. I don't think you should fucking have to fucking apologize to anyone. No. Well, to anyone. I mean, no matter well, what no. you say. You should because, apologize no, for being think, a hack. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. That's yeah, what you should that apologize That was a for. shitty that's, joke. I, when I said it was, was a terrible get. joke, that's I didn't mean it was because he's mentioned Down syndrome. Right. I meant because it wasn't funny. The joke it was horrible. Wasn't funny. It was stupid. Yeah. It was stupid. But I mean, if you don't like if you don't like a comedian's jokes, fucking don't listen to him. It's like everything else. Where is all this bullshit? It, you notice? I don't know. I know you guys have noticed all this crap coming down on comedians lately. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Big time. It, it, like you said, it's not about his apology. It was about the bad joke. It just wasn't funny. And, and then to blame Howard Stern, bl- he said hacking in of himself. Yeah. That was the worst thing. Even worse than apologizing this and that. And, but blaming uh, someone else or, or a group of people for your own actions. Listen, you be a comedian, but you have to be a fucking man, too, if you're going to fucking do, do your yeah. job. Can we just I say think- adult? I think yeah, they, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. You know what I mean? Man, woman, adult. And I hope yes, that, thank I, you, you yeah. know, I maybe Monday, if he comes out and he said, I wrote a joke like I had Down syndrome, then I'll accept it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it probably wouldn't I mean, be as funny anyway. Yeah, but I'm nodding. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm nodding. <laughs> on that note, no. I would actually like to blame this entire segment on Fireball Jesus. Yes. <sighs> okay, from the Damage Goods show. Oh, on the Damage Goods that Netflix. bastard just... Screw this. <laughs> I, I feel like his environment has just made us unfunny tonight. Yes. So, yeah. so, so on, on it's like a boys' club. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we wait. We're not talking about the Catholic Church again, are we? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whatever. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so anyway, so speaking of bad decisions, uh, I grew up in a town, a small town, a little one horse town, pink houses. It wasn't quite pink houses because we didn't. Many of us didn't have houses. We had settlements. <laughs> settlements <laughs> on exit sixty three of the Long Island Expressway. <laughs> <laughs> Little town called Patchog, Long Island. Patchog, yeah. And Patchog was a proud and prominent member of Suffolk County, Long Island. Oh. Oh shit! I heard that. They found Suffolk them. County. Yeah, Myself. where they found all those dead bodies, friggin' yeah. somewhere, wasn't it? No, no. Charlie's no. not coming back for another six oh, months. Oh, yeah. okay, all right. <laughs> Damn it! Something did happen in my hometown of Suffolk County, Long Island. Several crack pipe vending machines started spouting up. Is that why Charlie's not coming for a few weeks? <laughs> <laughs> He's busy collecting the change. <laughs> it's He's sitting there in the donation booth. Yeah. <laughs> it was Apparently, his idea. There, there, there's a bunch of <laughs> random vending machines that have coin slots in them showing up throughout Suffolk County with the word pens on the front because that's what people do <laughs> yeah they, they say i got two pen. quarters let me buy a pen <laughs> yeah. and then a are... pen comes out no no it gets better <laughs> these things have been well orchestrated these are well mechanized crack pipes yeah that where you take the pen apart turn it inside out slide something out next thing you know you're smoking crack right you oh, just add rock and enjoy, and enjoy. right? <laughs> because from what I from what I got from the, I mean, it, it comes with friggin' uh, filters and everything. Yeah, this filters oh, no, inside. You're fully it. set up to smoke some crack. You're all set, yeah. man. The only thing you need is crack. And you know, you know that the, these things were cemented into the ground. Oh yeah, they was yeah. totally. So like, I think wow. if we're gonna we're gonna capitalize on this and start selling crack right on the side of it. So you buy the yeah. crack pipe and then buy the crack. Well, you know the guy, you know the guy, you know the poor, the it poor just vendor. Says at the top, needless to say, crack. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be the, I hate to, I would hate to be the poor vendor filling that, those, those machines up with crack pipes. Because yeah. you know that motherfucker's going to get but robbed you know and shot up. every freaking, like, you know. It's, how else are you going to get a crack pipe? You need one, right? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm so, sitting at a table so with a gonna... guy who actually fashioned one. Out of tinfoil. <laughs> Come on, Brad. No, no. I mean, uh, I, I did that once. I was 18, first week in college. 
But most of us have gone out and found pipes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, I spent you know, this twelve bucks to get a glass exactly. one. Yeah. Reynolds, Reynolds wrap is only no. three bucks. Roll, bitch. It's, but, <laughs> instead of blowing people for crack, why don't you blow glass and yeah. build a real pipe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we so, hear it. Anyway, to say, I, Don't I just wanted crack. to bring that up just to mention my hometown. 1 1 to the 772, baby. What else happened in the news, oh, boys? Oh, shit. I know there's one headline that we kind of want to do for a roundup. And I think we should just get right to it. All right. I think I know what you're talking about. I think I and know what you're I'm shocked about. by this. I'm not. This is a, if you uh, actually listen to their music, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, no, I was yeah. definitely not surprised whatsoever. Craig, what's the headline, pal? So Paul McCartney and John Lennon were uh, uh, apparently close enough friends that they could just sit down in the room, drop trial, and fucking just start cranking it. <laughs> maybe with maybe with another per you know, there's a couple other people in the room, and apparently the lights were off. So Wait a that minute, made it cool. Are we talking about masturbation? Yes. Awesome. And. A couple of other people, and they would just yell out like Starlet's names. That what was the their thing. Fuck? So they would just like yell out like Bridget a bunch Bondo of guys and just keep cranking. Like no chicks in the in the room. No, 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 no. Just no a bunch of dudes yelling out the names of chicks. Yeah. You guys want to turn so, out the lights? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie. Yeah. No. <laughs> You beat me to the jury. I was yeah. gonna be like, both of your wives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now these, I, yeah, Paul McCartney said it was it was like uh, one of those things. They were just yeah, whatever. How much Someone did Ash have to do with this? Yeah, I'm sure a ton of it. But it begs the question: If Paul McCartney and John Lennon once masturbated together, or masturbated together countless times, mostly for those later albums, yeah. What songs would they have written if they did that a lot? I think they wrote a bunch of them. I think so. And some of them already have the same names. Yep. <laughs> and I would say Come Together Right Now would be, <laughs> would be the first one. I would have said getting off with a little help from my friends. <laughs> well, <laughs> fucking we all jerk it in the yellow submarine. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, dude. <laughs> that's not bad I, I would have said lay jude yeah. <laughs> there you go i mean obviously there's the whole entire white album yeah of right course. <laughs> yes, there it is. and if it's pure white those are good they should, just, they should just call it splat <laughs> i would have loved it like the beatles 1965 jizz cannon there <laughs> <laughs> you go and I saw him standing there. I would have said, we can work it out. <laughs> I said, I want to hold your hand. No, dude, not now. <laughs> I was going to say, I want to hump your hand. I want to hump your hand. I'm so glad you're singing it. <laughs> Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hands Club Band. That is the freaking, <laughs> that's the bomb right there. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Um, I'm not going to do the next one because we actually figured out there were a bunch of real song titles. There, too. there was, I, I started reading them and I'm like, holy shit. How did we is not know? Like, I mean, there's just one after another. I already did one, um, but all right. Yeah, real song titles. Just, why don't we do it in the road? <laughs> why don't? Circles. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got something to hide except me and my monkey. <laughs> what the fuck, man? It won't be long. Oh, I like that one. I've got a feeling. <laughs> Leave my kitten alone. <laughs> Is that a really a song? Yes. Jesus Christ. 100%. Not a second time. <laughs> We're doing it once. That's it. Don't tell anybody. A shot of rhythm and blues. Some other guy. That's a song? Really? Th these are all songs. You know you want to do it. <laughs> Is that No way the Beatles wrote oh, a song. Yeah, you man. know you want to do it. They got a lot tell of me what you want to see. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Cover your face. Your mother should know. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> I like that one. Fucking unbelievable. Actually, huh? I had one or two real songs. I had uh, You Really Got a Hold on Me. Yep. <laughs> and then Help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of that shit. That's enough it. of that shit. That is fucked up. I, I do like the roundup until we get to the end of every roundup, and then we look at each other like, what the fuck are we doing? What the, yeah, what what the, the hell doing? just happened? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do a little housekeeping here because it is the end of the show. Guys, yes. cheers. Good episode. A lot of fun. Definitely. Covered bro. a lot of things. Yeah, Covered we Covered a lot of things. We did. So uh, did John and, and freaking... Yeah, no. Well, Paul... <laughs> Paul. I, I always said there's a reason those Beatles wore all those turtlenecks. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just they were emulating their own dicks. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great if they folded them up over their ears. Because <laughs> they're all from Europe. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking oh. beige album. Yeah. <laughs> the beige album. And yeah, we call this one cheese. Oh, <laughs> Richard. Oh my god. You should have done a public service announcement. Yeah. Your toothbrush is more than just your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so now that we're gross. Uh, <laughs> uh, if if you're still with us, <laughs> needless to say, it can be found on Twitter and Facebook at, at NTS underscore podcast. Check us out. Leave us a comment. Show us some love. Uh, you can buy our merchandise because, well, we don't have a Beatles cheese shirt. <laughs> <laughs> we're we thinking are, about we're, it now. Maybe are, next week. <laughs> we are, we're working on it, and I've already got five design ideas in mind. <laughs> no shit. But we can do a Beatles-themed shirt or anything else you might want from Needless to Say. Go to, over to teespring.com. Search for Needless to Say. I could give you a URL, but it's way too fucking long, and you're not going to copy and paste my voice. So we're good there. Um, also, uh, I'm going to throw it to Craig for this, but we're going to be at Rhode Island Comic Con, and I think it's important that we continue to mention this week yes, over we, uh, week. So, Craig, take it, bro. Yes, Rhode Island Comic Con. We'll be there from November 2nd to the 4th. we got our own table. We're going to have a raffle. But uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We, you know, we're going to grab some interviews from hopefully some people. But we also want to talk to you. So if you if you decide to come down, because it's a great show, there's a ton of celebrities there. There's a ton of stuff going on. If you come on down, swing by the table, walk up. There's we'll talk. We'll put you on the air. Yeah, and we will have waivers. Yes, we will have big time waivers. Wait, yes, none of us can afford a lawyer. Yes, come down if you want to be on the air. You'll be on the air. Yes. And if you want to be on the show, you'll be on the show. If you want to be on our page, you'll be on our page. Yes, exactly. We are going to be as open as anybody could be at that show. And we're not going to charge you shit for no, coming to see us. nothing. You want a picture with Craig and his neck thing? <laughs> <laughs> Come on down. Come on down. Take it'll a selfie. Free. <laughs> if you want a picture with half of Mike, it'll be free. If you, yeah. want, a, you want a picture with all of Mike, it'll be $10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pictures with Brad's yeah. nose will be twenty five dollars. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. only if you want to pose inside of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like those people in the shark jaws. <laughs> See the scientists standing in the shark jaws, like four people standing in Brad's nose. It'll it, it'll be like Lorray Caverns. Lorray <laughs> Caverns. <laughs> <laughs> We'll give you a bumper sticker that said, you know, this car has climbed Mount Breddington. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's going to be gonna fun, be, though. Yeah, it's going to be, be a great time. It's going to be a lot of fun. And it's Rhode Island Comic Con from November 2nd to the 4th. Come on down. We'll be there. Uh, with that, I have nothing else. Uh, Christy is currently, quote unquote, fighting a hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so she's, she's so devastated by this storm that she's sending us texts. Throughout the show tonight. Yep. Uh, so we're going to throw another shout out to her new puppy. Her name is Abby Rose. Yes. I'd also like to throw a shout out to my babysitter, also <laughs> named Abby Rose. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, right? Yep. Way to name a dog, yeah. Christine. <laughs> Way to name a dog. Uh, no, the puppy's beautiful. You guys are great. Stay safe down there. I know you're acting cocky with the sunshine photos right now, but that storm is coming. Just get inside. Yeah, exactly. Don't be stupid. Think of the puppies. Yeah. And type some shit before the power goes out. 
Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I know you ain't working. Yeah. <laughs> Use that battery power for something good and do some NTS rundowns. And yeah, she runs NTS rundowns.com. Yes, she'll she she'll does. get to it eventually. But anyway, I don't want to whisper about that anymore. Craig, do you have any inspirational words for us? I do. Seth from the band cycle that we love so much that we've blown so much smoke up so much ass. Yep. <laughs> Seth got married this weekend. Congratulations to you and your beautiful bride. That poor girl. And with that said, needless to say, we said it. <laughs> i